Hello. In this video, I'm going to be going over one of the techniques I use to make polygonal hair in Blender. Now note, this uh, video is not a step-by-step -step tutorial video. I'll be going over it pretty quickly just so you can get the basic idea of what I do. If you want to see a more detailed video on how I d use this method, please leave a comment below, let me know, and uh, I can do that. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Here's a preview photo to just show you what I'm going to achieve. As I said, it's nowhere near a finished project. It's just really simply showing you the method that I use. Enjoy. Alright, here we go. For this method, I'm going to be using strands of particle hair to make my curves. Um, if you don't know how to use particle hair, then um, leave a comment below and I'll make a video for that. But this one isn't going into detail. Once you have your particle hair strands set out the way you want them, you convert them into a mesh. Once you convert them into a mesh, we're going to be converting them into, into um, curves. So just press the spacebar, search for the convert to option, and then uh, convert it to a curve. Here I'm making a bezier curve. Um, I'm using this to extrude along my curves. Um, for more detailed hair, you want to have some divisions, uh, say two, three, four, so you can have waves in it. But for simplicity, I'm going to be using just one, so there won't be any division. It'll be it'll be flat. Now, in order to extrude this uh, curve along the hair curve, I go to Bevel Object and select the curve that I want to use. The next step is to convert this mesh um, curved hair into mesh. So it's now editable. You can edit it, style it uh, however you want. It's easier if you have more divisions, more detailed hair. It'll look better. Now at this stage, I'm just going to edit the hair. I'm going to make sure that it's all coming out of the scalp. Uh, I'm going to fix the shape up. Um, because I don't have uh, divisions it, and it's just a flat, flat plane, uh, I do have to do more work? Maybe less. I mean, there are less points to move, but um, you get more shape the more divisions that you have along your extruded curve or the bezier curve that you're going to extrude. In this next step, I was going to taper the ends, but I forgot um, to do it while I was in the curved uh, section. It's a lot easier in that um, you do it during while you're still in the curve before you convert it to a mesh. So I went back and redid that. So here, af while I'm still in a um, curved, the curved mode. I go into editing, I select all of the tips, and then using proportional editing, the proportional editing tool, I scale down the tips so that they are nice and tapered. And now I convert the hair back into a mesh and start editing it. I'll speed through this part a bit. Here I am adding a subdivision modifier so that the hair is all nice and smoothed out. And I also change the shading view to smooth instead of solid. Here I'm going to uh, UV the hair. Now the more strands you have, uh, the longer aligning those strands can take depending on what your texture looks like. Um, so in edit mode for the hair, I just um, select all of it, then press U, and then press unwrap. Now I'm going to add the material for the hair. It's going to be an 
a sort of hair texture that I generated myself. I'll show you how to make it and uh, at the end of the video. I haven't UV'd, um, I haven't aligned my UVs yet, but this is just to see so far how it will look. Now at this point, I'm going to fix my UV so that the hair looks better. I'm going to select one side with my uh, brush, brush selection tool, which is the C tool. I'm going to um, go turn off proportional editing, and I'm going to scale on the, what is that, the X axis to zero to straighten it out. And I'm going to do that to the other side, and I'm going to do that to all of them until they're all lined up. Now that the UVs are all lined up, the hair looks better already. Next, I'm going to add a solidify modifier. This will add thickness to the hair. Now, when using this method, um, unless you redo the UVs to accommodate this other side, they will there will be some stretching along the edge. But because of the way I did this, you can't really tell, and it's simple anyway, so I'm not going to stress it. Okay, here you can just see how it looks so far. Good, but uh, there could be a little more volume. I mean, there's not too much you can do because this is flat. I didn't do divisions like I said. So I'm going to go into sculpt mode and edit it how I see fit. Next, to enhance the look of this hair texture, I am going to be doing two things. First, I am going to be using that hair texture uh, with a glossy shader to uh, just give it some shine. Um, and then I'm going to be using that texture as well to make a bump map so that there's some texture in the hair. So just follow along with um, how I set up my nodes and you should get uh, some pretty good results. Here's the finished pl product, so far anyways. We're going to add another hair texture after I show you how to do it here in Photoshop. Um, you don't have to use Photoshop, I guess, but um, the tools I use here to make this texture are in Photoshop. I haven't uh, seen them anywhere else. Maybe the directional blur is in GIMP 2 or something like that. I don't know. Um, so I pick a color and I fill the layer with that color. Next I add noise and once I have the noise set up the way I like with monochromatic colors and the correct size and the correct amount or whatever uh, and I'm satisfied with it, I click OK. Next I go into blur and add motion blur this gives it the strand effect. I choose which direction I want my hair to uh, go towards up and down or left to right and then how much blur I want and then I click OK. Okay now here I decided I wasn't happy with uh, how small the strands looked so I um, made a new document with uh, fewer pixels or uh, a smaller resolution, I guess, or like just fewer pixel diameter, um, and I redid the whole process. Now I am using the transform tool to get rid of those blurry edges on top and bottom. 
um, but they'll be gone by the end anyways because I'm going to be making the texture bigger. You can also use the curve tool to play around with the contrast, get the hair just the way you want it, customize it any way you want. Now here's the texture I had before. As you can see, it's more dramatic. Oh, there's some more colors in there. Um, I'm going to be editing this texture further. Now I'm going to use the transform tool to make my texture bigger because I want to really be able to see those strands. Um, if your hair, if your UVs are smaller, you have more strands. Of course, you're going to want it smaller because they'll be bigger on each strand. Here I'm using Smart Sharpen to just further customize and decide, you know, how I want my hair. Um, basically, just tweaking here and there, adjusting in the color, sharpness, the blurriness, uh, contrast, and stuff like that. And the Hue and Saturation tool always comes in handy. Here I've duplicated the hair layer I had and I'm going to make it black and white um, so that I can use it to further enhance the color layer. Um, I'm going to drag to the top and then use uh, one of the different methods to add a, a more dramatic effect to the hair strands and, uh, and this will be the last process. Yeah. After I'm done fiddling with this hair, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the node editor, or I mean, the, to my nodes, to my image texture, and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the final result at the end. Here is the uh, second hair texture that we just made. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please let me know. Um, also leave a comment if you want to see more detailed videos. I would be happy to make them. Uh, thanks for watching.